It's laughable, Kate. What is? It is absolutely laughable. Are you talking about my coffee in a plastic container? I no, not specifically. I might add that to the pile of. I'm laughability. doing. I'm doing the best I can. That's <laughs> I've had coffee in a can before. Today, yeah. it's a nice coffee in a cup. You're, you're like you're you're conducting a a lifelong experiment of coffee vessels and the most appropriate vessel to carry your coffee in. Indeed, I am a single origin, so you know. Good. Bougie. Very bougie? very good. Bougie. I don't even know how to say it. You are going to find out what is laughable at some point during today's episode of the Wheelhouse Podcast. My name's Joel Spreadborough, joined as always by the one, the only, uh, Katerina Bartes. Hi. Hi. Hey, you did a good job on the Today Show, as always. Thank you. That was excellent at the track Thank notes. you. Thank yeah. you. Yes, we uh, managed to get the weekend weather guy, fellow by the name of Dan. Yeah. Uh, we taught him how to ride a track bike. Great. And by we, I mean myself and Scott McGrory, um, who had his gold medal in his back pocket. Does he ever leave home without the medal? I don't think so. Yeah, I wouldn't either. No. Scotty we even McStory. got We even got Merksy on a track bike. That's a, that's awesome. Yeah, I was actually I was chatting to James Moriarty, of course, the pride of Balmoral, giving me some uh, some insight into the value of the track bikes, and he's like, oh, soft, a soft ninety thousand dollars, roughly, on what he was on on the tracks. Yes, yeah, we had one the morning. It was an Argon, uh, one of the sprinters' bike, Matthew Glates's yeah. uh, bike, and Dan, the weather. The weatherman, Dan the weatherman. I wonder if his name was Dan. Anyway, it rhymes. Yeah, Dan Anstey. Dan Anstey. Yeah, he was... Anstey. Hey, Merksy. Yeah. You're there too. Hey, Merksy. I'm here. <laughs> he yeah. was picking it up and having a go. And then he said, oh, how much does one of these cost? Yeah. And I said, that exact one you're holding, probably around 65 grand. He, he didn't drop it. He put it down so delicately. Oh, yeah. And then yeah. he backed away and he said... I think we'll leave it there as a prop. <laughs> well, I get that because when I, I was out at the uh, the BMX uh, worldies at, at Chandler the other week and had the honour of riding one of the BMXs v- very briefly around the car park and whatnot and was halfway through and I was just, you know, having a bit of fun, taking the, wheel, the feet off the pedals and someone yells out and goes, don't forget that's probably worth about 18 grand. Very quickly <laughs> applied my foot brakes, yeah. uh, as in feet on the concrete, <laughs> slow down. And carried it back like it was a, a, a baby, like an infant, well, honestly. Speaking of fancy machines, yep. we've got a little bit of bling in the studio today. You know I like my bling. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, so to put you in the frame, Kate, what exactly is it that we've got? Ah, uh-huh, I see what you've done there. Uh, <laughs> we've got two very beautiful Colnago frames. Uh, we've got the VR4, uh, which is the exact frame that today Pogacar rides including a little QR code like NFT to claim ownership of it. Uh, and we have a beautiful rose gold C-series uh, Conago handmade in Italy. They're so <sighs> beautiful. Um, although they've told me that they'll be picking that up at the end of the day Yep. Uh, because somebody is uh, has ordered it. Wait, wait. Oh, wait, okay. Wait, wait, wait. I thought mm. we got to keep it. What? Yeah, that's what I thought too. Huh? When when they brought it in, I was very excited. Okay. And they said they just launched, and this color in particular is so popular that we won't be able to leave it with you for too long. So. Oh, it's flying off the shelves. I tell you what, it, it about is. eight and a half thousand dollars worth. So if you apply your code, your discount, you get a a not insignificant eight hundred and fifty dollars no. off at no, Bike Bug. That's that's a that's pretty good. We'll we'll, t- we'll talk a bit about it later, but. If you're watching, you will notice the beautiful bling at the front of the studio. Yeah, and you'll notice that I mm. stayed like statue still for the entire <laughs> episode. Yeah, do I'm not worried. bang yeah. the desk. I know. I'm like, if I move, the bike's going to fall over. I mean, to the point where I've raised my chair because I gesticulate so much <laughs> that I was scared I would hit the table. You have. I've, I've noticed that. I you do. said, I was like, gee, your posture today, you're sitting up beautiful and yes. straight. <laughs> We should bring a Colnago in every week. Yeah, well, we could do that too. Never have to go to the Cairo again. Just not the rose gold one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it's the Wheelhouse Podcast. We've got a lot to talk about today. The track nuts first and foremost. Uh, Parry Nice as well. And the plap trap. Everyone's fallen into the plap trap and that makes us very, very happy. Uh, Tirano Adriatico, my favourite trophy in world cycling, hands down, is up for grabs. We're going to give you an update there as well. Esports. I love, I love, I love that the inaugural esports nationals are happening in Brisbane. Not saying that's where we were, because we're we're in a mysterious, undisclosed location, of course. 
But it's just so, there's so much magic about it. Mm. If you get in, you're the first person to do it. If you win, you're the first person to do it. If you turn up, you're among the first people to do it. I just love it so but much. It's, yeah, it's the first, well, we'll dive into it a bit more, but it's the first time they're having a in real life national championships for esports, a big final. I love it. Um, like they have very cool. Let's go to the track. Nats one done. Uh, it, it, incredible action, Kate. You were there. Yeah. Scott McStory was there. The Wheelhouse podcast was there. Let's start with the name I mentioned earlier, uh, the guy they called The Professor. Uh, and I, I just want to ask you quickly, did you give James Moriarty that nickname? Was I, that you? On here, yes. Yeah. Because <laughs> he, he thinks it might have been you as well. Yes, it, it was. Yeah, okay, it was, good. yes. Excellent. Well, The Professor... <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Look, a, a third and a second, but the third getting onto the podium mm. in the team's pursuit, I believe, was one of the most tenacious rides you've seen. Yeah, so second in the team's pursuit. And that was second crackers in the teams, okay. because yep. they crossed the line and they got given the win, Queensland, over Western Australia. Uh, now, all Australians know the raging debate of... East Coast versus West Coast and the competition that goes on. Yeah, Tupac and Snoop Dogg would blush <laughs> if they knew how serious this East versus uh, West is. So, Queensland given the win. Yep. Home track, not just a home track, but the state team was entirely made up of Balmoral club members, which is literally hop, skip and a jump down the road from the Anamir's Velodrome. So, they had signs and crowds and locals. It was amazing. Honestly, yep. truly where community merges with elite. It was beautiful. So they give them the win, everybody cheers. But we're in commentary, McStory and I, and we're just mm -hmm. waiting, waiting for the presentation. It transpires that the timing strips stopped at the first rider no. across the line. But the timing for a team's pursuit is actually the third rider across the line. And because it was so close, like 0 0.35 of a second, they then had to go back look at the manual timing, look at the videos and try and figure out if that was correct. Turns out they tipped it on its head and it went to WA. Oh. A bit of controversy because for a while, the Westies, they were quiet. They roared back into action. Oh, uh, they, but, yeah. you know, I mean, I think it was just so close. Like, what do you do? But Moriarty or the professor, <laughs> hi, James, hi, James. Uh, as we like to call him, <laughs> he rode the points race. He got a bronze medal. But it was the most entertaining points race, yep. honestly, that I've ever seen. And his ride for the bronze medal is one of the best points race rides I've ever seen. And I want to tell you why, because Connor Lay won the gold medal and yep. he was just so dominant, like it was sensational. And you might wonder why that's not the best ride. But Moriarty went out really well, was leading at one point. Then he started to fade. He started to drop wheels. It looked like he was going to get dropped. I was almost captivated just by where he was in the bunch. Yeah. I was like, oh, Moriarty's got to move up. Oh, no, he's getting caught on bad wheels. Next thing, he's attacking and going for a lap. We get all excited. Here he is. He's back in the race. He gets about 30 metres from the back of the bunch and he runs out of steam. Oh. So then, oh, it was like slow motion. Yeah. He then gets caught again by the bunch. And because of this big effort, he then goes out the back of the bunch and he's now 30 metres He's in exactly the same spot, but now instead of being nearly a lap up, he's... I can't handle <laughs> he this. He looks like he's getting... Oh, yeah. I could barely handle it. Wow. And so he rejoins and he just, you know, he's sitting in about eighth overall and we were saying, well done to him. Like at this point, yeah. regardless of anything, he's given it his all. But then with less than 10 laps to go, he attacks again and he damn well takes a lap, Joel, and he gets the 20 points and that catapults him up to the bronze medal position. It, it was seriously brilliant. The only person I've seen take a lap at that point in a points race mm. is Cameron Meyer when he won the world championships in 2012 in Melbourne, an Olympic year. And I was running from the hosting position on the side of the velodrome into the centre to do the interview. Wow. And, you know, Cameron was going to be on the podium, mm, but mm. it wasn't anything. Uh, maybe on third, but mm -hmm. nothing that we were, I needed to rush down for. So I thought I'd stop in the bathroom on the way, didn't I? And I'm in the bathroom and I'm not even kidding, yeah. the tiles start shaking because the crowd is roaring that loud. 
I finished my business quick sticks, I tell you. I yeah. got out to the middle of the track just to see Cameron Meyer joining the back of the field. Yeah. So he's taken a lap in the four laps that it's taken me to get from the top into the centre of the track. Okay. Won the world championship, no less, and all within the last 10 laps. And, I mean, I get goosebumps talking about it. The best moment for me in points racing. And Moriarty was giving me those feels. Oh, like, just... It. It ain't over till it's over. I, I gotta say, it was so good. Inspired, obviously, by Club Balmoral. Shout out Murray, of course. But second wind, third wind, four wind, more more wind than a baked bean buffet. Honestly, <laughs> well, where does it come from? I mean, there's different styles of points races, and there's some like Cameron Meyer was that generally didn't accrue a lot of points. So yeah. until he did those flyers and took the laps, he yeah. generally wasn't really anywhere in the leaderboard. But Moriarty's really not generally that kind of rider like he's incredibly quick and he's got about four to six really good laps in him but if he's not quite careful it really bites him okay. so you know that comes at a cost and so he's a bit of a yo-yo rider in that regard and I started my points race career like that too and I had to work really hard and learn to temper that yeah but I was able to do it because it was at that point an Olympic event and I didn't have a team's pursuit. So that was my whole focus. Mm -hmm. But for Moriarty, he's looking at going to Paris for the team's pursuit. So the points racing is almost a bonus and he doesn't have the capacity in training to really work on that. So he's working with what he's got, which is the skills needed for a team's pursuit, which is those shorter bursts of energy, you know, and physiologically <laughs> can do it. But for him to recover and mentally not put himself out of the race because he would have been digging post holes. Like he suffers more doing a points race than Connor Lay suffered winning. Yep, yep, yep. It takes that real tenacity. I just, I can't rave about it enough. He's it, bowled you over. It will be yep. very hard to better that. The pride of Balmoral gives yep. everyone. Yep. The professor gives everyone a lesson <laughs> in, uh, in tenacity. Does, yes. I, I love it. It's a, it's a great story. Uh, he's he's got one eye not just on Paris but on a podium in Paris 100% yeah. and it's efforts like that I love how you say that about just just that you have a handful of good laps out of the out of that yeah. race picking that moment yeah. having that moment that's that's just what it's all about I absolutely it's, love it I mean there are a lot of really cool performances at track nats but there were two other things that really stood out um, the first was the incredible competition in the men's sprint mm -hmm. for the Olympic spots. So we have three that can go. We have a team sprint that can potentially win. We've got four athletes and all of them have been world champions and they've been Olympic hopefuls, they've been Olympians and they kind of had to fight it out on track and it was really interesting, especially – so you have Maddie Richardson who really stood out. You've got Lee Hoffman – Tom Cornish and Maddie Glatzer kind of scrapping I love a it. little bit. And that was really interesting. And um, and the third thing, and this turned into a bit of a on-air debate because McStory and I don't mind disagreeing. Yeah, a little fracas car in the booth. Uh, yep. <laughs> yes. And in the team sprint, one of the riders pulled his foot out of the gate. Yes, yes. And they said they will get a restart because the regulation has changed after the Shane Kelly incident, mm -hmm, the mm -hmm. famous Shane Kelly incident, where yep. if you pull your foot, you get a restart. Well, I don't like that rule. And I said that. I said, I, I don't know. I was like, a mechanical, yes, absolutely. But if you pull your foot because of technique or whatever it is, it's kind of tough titties. It's on you. It tough is. Titty. Can you pull your yeah. foot deliberately? Yeah, yeah. Like oh, if you're not feeling good, pull your foot, start again. Well, no, not really. And no. I mean, I guess these kind of athletes, good question though. Yeah, because great question. Yeah. Th thank theoretically. You. Yeah, well, <laughs> well done, Merckx. That's an outstanding query. Theoretically, yes, but there is no reason you would do it. Is it so, obvious if someone's doing it deliberately? Yeah, yeah it, would it would be. be. Okay. Yeah, and you could hurt yourself as well. Yeah. You could stack, you could bring somebody else down. Yeah. So here's the kicker. Scott and I are debating this and we have quite opposite views on it. And to be honest, I think... Part of he's quite emotionally invested in it because mm -hmm. of Shane Kelly, because he feels like that's one of the biggest travesties of Australian Olympic history. I don't disagree. However, in August last year, they changed the rule back, which was, you know, six months ago. This is the first Australian track competition we've had. Yeah. 
And so we then looked at the updated regs and it's now not, you don't get a restart. Oh. So they've been taken off everyone saying they'll get a restart and then they're like, no, actually, Rules no have restart. changed. Yeah. Yeah, has so, anyone, did anyone check the manual in the last I, six months? I really wonder, it's a question, like should you get a restart? Is that fair or not? And I think not. I tend to go down that line as well if it's if it's on you and it's something that like if you like you say just the technique side of it if it's that sound enough this shouldn't happen. Well, so imagine you're in a rugby league match, yeah, and you're trying to convert a try, but you slip, yeah, while you're going to kick, because whatever. Insert all of the different reasons here it could happen. Oh, that happens. That happens. Yeah, a but lot. you don't you don't yeah. get a re. They don't get to re kick. No. Yeah. Re kick. Yeah. 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 Like bummer. Yeah. Just turn you turn into a meme. <laughs> <laughs> the eternal glory of being me exactly so yeah i mean it really great racing yep. great way to kick off brisbane cycling festival oh absolutely uh, but for a number of different reasons can i just get an update what's will maddie gleitzer be there how's he going oh, one of my i tell you yeah. oh look we love maddie gleitzer yeah. he's such a good character he's so good for the sport yeah. merks has always said he belongs on a cereal box is he up there with sargon for you well, Merksy, he's, just, or? he's just handsome yeah smart yeah. Safe. Okay. What, what about his bike riding ability, Merksy? Anyway, back that, that, to you guys. He's <laughs> he has been the top of the Australian and the world sprinting yeah. game for a decade. Oh, he's out of control. Right? Absolutely. I think, I think it's going to be tough. Okay. All right. Well, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, Richo's been getting all the headlines. I love I love what he's had to say mm. about his his ability to hurt himself and push through pain barriers mm. better than ninety nine percent. Of people. Well, I, I think we should call him um, Matthew the Vomiter Richardson. <laughs> uh, oh, I think we call him uh, po Potty Mouth. Potty Mouth, yes. Yeah, dropping the F-bombs everywhere. Well, oh, and no. because half the time he's literally vomiting into a pot. Doesn't so hate. So it's a double Yeah, double a little whammy. Wallace and Gromit trackside, that's no. for sure. Okay. Mm. But you know what? Then goes out and rides like a Terminator. A so Terminator. He's a Terminator. Yeah. Okay. How exciting. We love it. It's fantastic. Great job to yourself uh, and the team there. You and McStory are, are just... I just want the popcorn when you two are going at it because it's just Can fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, they're co-commentators slash combatants. That's we what did, we love. Um, we did get the camera turned on us at one point when there was a track repair. Nobody warned us. Yeah. They'd said, you will not be on camera. And I was like slouched back in my seat. <laughs> and I, I was swigging a Diet Coke. Yeah. And... I was very ashamed because my sister was watching and I know what my sister Natalie thinks about diet the artificial soft stuff. drinks yeah, okay, and I yeah. straight away just was waiting for my phone to ping with did a it? mini lecture. Uh, no, but I did talk to her the next day and there was a tut-tut. So she dropped in the <laughs> yeah. a remonstration. Scott was yeah. also like he was sitting on a lounge chair, <laughs> like all relaxed back. So anyway, Leg up. fun and games. Yep, yeah, okay. Um, there you go. It's, I, I just, I'd, yeah, I'd love to see the rant from your <laughs> sister. How many times <laughs> have we spoken about you drinking <laughs> DC? Okay. Yeah. Let's go on the wheelhouse jumbo jet, which is back in commission, thanks mm. to us secretly selling off these frames and buying a new one. Uh, Parry Nice, as I used to call it, Paris Nice, uh, mm. underway. And there's been some nice riding in Paris, Kate. There has. Do you on, like that? I do. No, I do. On their way. <laughs> it's been a nice ride from yeah. Paris. Oh, oh, yeah. Anyway. Oh, hang on. I just yes. got a text from my niece. Uh, nice work, Uncle. Thank you, niece. Yes. Anyway, let's go. <laughs> let's press on. Yes. Well, on the last edition of the show uh, with McStory, we were out at the velodrome. And uh, in between our velodrome chat, yeah. we started talking about the fact that uh, Jake Alula had big time put Lucas Plapp out there. Mm -hmm. They'd said, not only are we taking him to Paris Nice, we're taking him with GC ambitions. We think he can run a drum here. So I posited to Scott, is this a realistic ambition? What do we think? I personally, I think anybody who has ever heard me talk about Plappy, Plap trap. I yep. think he just has, he's a generational talent. And his biggest impediment is himself yes. because sometimes he needs to be calmed down to be able to develop and learn, you know, almost kept in a, in a little bit of housing. Mm -hmm. In saying that, he has absolutely rocked it, Joel. And in a really interesting way, I think, because heading into Paranese, all eyes were on the big names. The Roglic, yep. Evenepoel. Yep. We were just waiting a la Poggi at Strata Bianchi, for the big names to come out and play and dominate. And himself, Lucas Flapp, 
young rider with Bitrago, a Colombian young rider riding for Bahrain Merida, uh, Bahrain Victorious. They turned it on its head. Yeah, hundred percent. They said we ain't waiting for that final climb. Mm-mm. And, and we're not reading the headlines. No. We're not reading the expectations. No. And I love this rap on plat, the rap, the plat rap, because we've been mm. talking about it for a while. Mm. And uh, this, Don't this fall could into be the, the moment. plat trap. Well, that, but we speak about this this season like this ridiculously long season. It's like if you get up somewhere like he is now, does that set the tone for an absolute? Here we go. You said generational talent. It's, so this is a really interesting debate because you could look at where his seasons come to date, and he would have won. I have no doubt he would have won the Tour Down Under had he have not fallen, um, and it was quite a yeah spectacular fall if we can call it that Uh, but he has been since november december breaking strava records albeit on home soil but showing that he's not just sitting back you know enjoying the off season no i was going to say the winter it's not for him but if you look at some of the riders like pogaccia or bernal young riders the development path like how quickly they improve over six months can be Mm mind-blowing and so what applied last season or what generally applies to riders that age they don't that rule doesn't apply to these generational talents it's out of control it 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 really is yeah Uh, he's how old is he exactly you know is he 22 he's 22 is he 21 22 it's it's ridiculous. It's and he's still not a hundred percent from his crash down in Adelaide. No, exactly. He's still pulling himself together. But I think it's the way they attacked the race because everybody was waiting for the final climb. But with twenty five k to go, he thought I'm going to give it a go. And he said afterwards that he attacked it like it was a time trial. And so he just rode, rode, rode. He ended up uh, getting distance with one and a half k to go by Betrago, who then won the stage. Uh, but Plapp took the leader's jersey, finished 10 seconds behind and left everybody behind kind of looking at each other thinking, oh, we kind of, we missed that. Is, is this it's what he's doing? It's an arrogance of sort, I think. Th- th- this, this sort of tactical shape up, uh, shake up as well, is this, is this what it's doing? Is it catching everyone with their nicks down? <laughs> so to speak. So to speak. Yeah, I think so. You know, yeah. I, I think that it used to be, cycling used to be about the absolute strongest rider or on the opposing side, the gutsiest who would attack Mm -hmm. long, long range and it would be one of those kind of days. But it's really getting quite interesting when you have riders like Plapp who is not yet Pogaccia, but he's also not Bunchville. Mm -hmm. And for him, why would he just roll in for 10th, follow wheels and run top 10? This is a much more dynamic way of racing, but because we are getting all these young guys coming through, Mm -hmm. there's so many to watch now. And the big teams are looking after their big riders and perhaps not paying as much attention. That's my view. I mean, I think there's a wee bit of arrogance in some of the teams and um, I'm definitely going to call out Evenepoel and his mob. I think that they race from their playbook and are quite vulnerable two moves like plaps we've seen it let's be honest we've seen it we yeah. saw it a little bit last year with remco as well across the year being yeah. a little bit uh i might have to go back to pizza hut because I'm, you know <laughs> well i mean it, look and he is such an incredible rider that he yeah. can get away with a lot and a lot of the time their tactics win by being a little bit more structured and a bit stiffer but a team like jaco alula they've kind of got nothing to lose yeah and they they like Plap for GC. Why not just give it a red hot crack? Because if he had have stayed in the bunch, he would have finished top ten. Yeah, we wouldn't really be talking about it right now. Mm. We'd say, oh, you know, he's riding well, good stuff. We but love you, Plappy. We love you. Let's let's get mm. it done. Let's get it done, even if you don't. Great effort. Let's go to <laughs> Torino Adriatico and. Uh, I'll just ask a simple question. Who's got their hand on the pole at the moment? On the on the trident? Yeah. Uh, well, it's so far shaping up between Ayuso, yep. Juan Ayuso from UAE, but they're waiting for the mountains for Jonas Vingegaard to come from. Cousin Jonas, through. come on. Is your, your, Cousin Jonas. Yeah. Because they're heading into the mountains soon. But interestingly, Ayuso, who's a pretty lean rider at all points in the season, uh, he's suffering in the cold. It was five degrees at the top of the climb, at the finish. There was some snow. 
And he said he really struggled um, with how cold it was. Mm. So, I mean, Jonas is also exceptionally lean. Yep. But because he's Scandinavian. He's used to um, it. He's a bit more used to it than yeah. the Southern Europeans. Yep. And so it's interesting because we talk about we've talked about how that's affected Jay Vine in the past, Absolutely. but we tend to think the Europeans all get lumped together in one pot, but they don't. Well, no, so and, and nor should they. We'll yeah. see how that goes as they cruise toward the coast. Nothing better than a, a ride in the snow in the five degree or less cold. So yeah, I'm not a fan of it, but you know, good luck to good them. on them. I, I think it's uh, laughable, personally. Not that, <laughs> but uh, the latest UCI. Uh, l- this is our wheel of misfortune, I guess, for the week. Kate's favourite segment um, when she gets the opportunity to tee off mm. at the UCI. And you're not alone this week. We have a number one ticket holder of this show, massive fan, mm. has been since day one. We love him. Uh, we've just been talking about him being a little bit, you know, out of sorts. And that extends uh, to the ban on head socks. Re- Remco Evanapool, not happy. He not is happy Jan. not happy at all. I mean, it, it, it's a double whammy. So firstly, it emerged on social media the other day, these ridiculous images of the helmet. Have a look at this. Right. If, if you take a look at this helmet, it is absolutely insane. It looks like, you know, a UFO on a head. <laughs> It's, I mean, I was wondering how I could replicate it in paper mache and yeah. I was thinking you'd need at least three balloons to just the size of it. And there are a lot of people on social media like Sam Wellsford, hilariously, all he wrote uh, on Twitter to a picture of it was, I quit. I'm done. <laughs> like, I'm done. If this is what we're talking about, I'm done. Yeah. From a fashion perspective, I mean, maybe I'm just not cool. I don't know. But... I feel like, you know, my poor father would mm. have keeled over mm-hmm. if he saw this. You know, he was a, a man who only liked a bike if it was black. Yep. He was very offended when I wore pink shoes at one stage. What he are you said, doing? Come on now. But it's opened up this quite interesting debate around, well, certainly fashion and reputation, but also helmet design and aerodynamics. No question that the Yumbo Lisa, bike, Lisa bike, gosh. Every commentator, by the way, is struggling yeah, with Visma. that. It's Visma. Visma. We're going to have Lisa to get a, 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 a sh- like a swear jar. Oh, Every no, time you I F did. it up, we're going to make you a put A Visma five vase. I did, I did see a picture from the commentary team uh, there where they had it written, Visma yeah. Lisa bike, and stuck to the screen because they like, kept stuffing yeah, it up. When it's all happening, oh. you know, bloody Anyway, hell. Visma Lisa bike. Yeah. You know, people just saying, like, what are they doing? But then it turns out that... The UCI has let this one sail through, but they've banned the head sock on the specialised helmet. And this is where we come back uh, to Evenepoel because he's come out and said it's absolute nonsense Mm -hmm. that they would ban the the sock. Like it was legal until now and now they're banning it. Now these guys are essentially taking the piss, turning up in these rocket ship helmets. Well, you know what? I honestly, I I kind of feel like they want to play with our balls. (laughs) That's what Remco said. Oh, sorry, I should have said. I should have yes. attributed that quote first. He did. He did say that. Do you want to read the quote? Read the quote. Read the quote. Yeah. Well, there's a, a, a number of quotes. That, uh, I love it. Two years ago, they've also authorized the helmet. Now they're taking it out. I feel like I, I feel like they just want to play with our balls. Says Remco. <laughs> It's not very friendly what they're doing. There are other teams that are almost riding with time trial helmets in the peloton. I'm thinking of EF Education. I love this. I love this. Yeah. Thinking of EF Education, easy post. They're dragging cycling into the ridiculous and they're making all the riders turn against the UCI. I feel like he might be a little bit late on that last bit of that, that quote. Mm. I think the riders, that might have already happened like 50, 60 years ago. But the rest of it, I love it. I, I think even funnier than the... I kind of feel like they want to play with our balls is the next line. It's not very friendly it's what they're doing. It's not very friendly. I would say that's overly friendly. Oh. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's also inappropriate. Order. <laughs> Order. Okay. No. Oh, dear. Okay. Now look, you know, at least buy them dinner first. I mean, um, it's not Remco's thing, clearly, but it's... Yeah. Hey, hey, hey. Leave the balls out of it, <laughs> says Remco. All right? Just... Let's leave the balls out of it for now. Yeah. He's kind of got a point. Yeah. Have we have we yeah. seen him without a helmet on recently? Just making sure he's not anatomically <laughs> oh like they haven't moved. The, no, I'm just asking because it's a helmet. He's talking about his... Yeah, I believe oh, so. It's, the okay. point is though, they approved the helmet. Yeah. 
and now they're pulling it out like that, look, crazy. Look, uh, from that perspective, it, it is. There's so much they need to know. There's so much they need to adhere to. There's so much they mm. need to be across and on top of. That that really stuffs them around. Let, let's let's from a yeah. look hilarious quotes aside. Um, it, it is. It'd be a pain in the ass to keep up with all of this. Well, it would be, and I think actually the point is, it's a funny, entertaining water cooler debate. You know, what's this helmet design about? Have they lost their minds? Yeah. But it's within regulation. I think we need to explore further. And the UCI say they're going to do this now. Yeah. Who knows what'll come of it? Is if a helmet is safe, so fit for purpose, will yep. protect the rider, passes all the standard tests. Who cares? Yeah, yeah, but see, they're saying that the helmet design is now being designed to have an advantage, a time advantage, when its sole purpose is safety. But why? It shouldn't be its sole purpose because every other part of the bike, the frame, the kit, the components... Yeah, but does the safety everything. suffer because of the humongousness of yeah. the helmet. And, and let's be honest, the, the out and out fashion appeal the of some of these. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's, and that's the point. If it compromises it, it yep. shouldn't be allowed. If it doesn't compromise it, let's not be silly here. Like, let innovation happen. The UCI um, has, will, will analyse an in-depth oh. analysis uh, of, of helmet rules in response, <laughs> I love this, to a striking, a strikingly designed Giro but era it, head. Uh, again, trial. if it is safe and it is all good, then what part do they have in the Farshan? You know like what? Like the design part. You know what the UCI is saying? It's a sin to look this or, good. <laughs> it's a sin. Or here's an idea. Yeah. Sit down and use a little bit of creativity and yeah. forethinking and think with an aerodynamicist and go, what will helmet evolution look like? What do we need to put into our regulations now yeah. to allow them to develop, but within pretty firm guidelines, what are the vulnerabilities in our rules? Where are they going to make the most of that? that that'll, like be a, that'll be a long conversation. But that doesn't seem them. like a really hard process to yeah. me. No, no. I think they, they should have to be able to walk through a, a normal standard doorway. <laughs> Good luck. Hold on, front <laughs> ways or yeah, sideways? Yeah, front ways. Oh, yeah. okay. Both ways. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> Stand, maybe let's give him a double door, like at least a French door. Like give him, give, give him a fighting French chance. Uh, and for goodness sake, can you just leave the balls out of it, guys? Leave their balls alone, all of them. Uh, look, and I'm going. Look, we're having fun with it, but I, 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 I have to say, from the athlete's perspective, there's so much to do. And, and, and oh, hang on, just sorry, um, just got a quick cross reference. This new ruling that's now. And it's, mid that's, season that's BS. too. It's BS. It is. It is. I yeah. agree. No, I agree. I hate these, you know, very knee-jerk responses. Yes. Because everyone's talking about how crazy it is. Yep. I mean, the helmet's legal. Otherwise, it could never have been manufactured. You're not allowed mm. to just rock up with a new piece of technology mm. that hasn't gone through all the processes of being approved. Mm. So they knew about it and now they're pretending like, ooh, the design's questionable. Who's, yep. not, who's not doing their job? We're going to delve into the world of cricket. Uh, Remco, if you're listening and watching, I know you are. We're going to send you a box uh, that you use to oh. protect your... <laughs> it's like... You put it down your, your yeah. necks and... Uh, Just keep the sandpaper out of it. Oh, come on. <laughs> is what I'm saying. Yeah, that's yeah. low. <laughs> I just had a, a startling image of sandpaper instead of, the, yeah, on Ex the necks. But anyway. Exfoliant. It, oh. I don't know that that's where you need to exfoliate, but, you know. Moving on. Moving on on the Wheelhouse Cycling <laughs> Podcast with Catherine Bates. Uh, <laughs> I'm not saying my name. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Covering the and, big topics here. And Merxy. Uh, now, Strata Bianchi. Uh, let's mm. let's go to this. Uh, Tommy Pidcock out. Yeah, let, let's just say, what's what's the word I'm looking for? Peacock. Know. What do peacocks do? Peacock? Strut. Strutting. The right. Yeah, you know, saying, come on, let's do it. A you know? peacocking pidcock? Peacocking pidcock, once again. <laughs> 80 kilometres worth of reasons to peacock pidcock. Well... So what's happened is, surprise, surprise, today Pogaccia crosses the line, arms in the air, but it was the attack at 82 kilometres to go that had people's... Whew, feathers in a, in a Their ruffle. Peacock yeah. feathers in a ruffle. Yeah. And look, he said in his pre-interview, this is where I'm going to attack. And, and he did. So he did the Babe Ruth, basically. Yeah. Like, he did the Babe Ruth. Yeah. This, yeah. Is where, this is where, this is, I'm going to sock a dinger. And it's going, so it's going there. Sock a dinger. Yeah. Yeah, sock a dinger. That's what you say, sock a dinger. Yeah, sock a dinger. Yeah. Yeah. 
Next, Remco is going to be saying, I was going to sock a dinger. <laughs> but anyway. I thought now, you were going to say, I was going to sock a balls, but no, anyway, sorry. Oh so, <laughs> amazing ride by uh, Pogaccia. Yeah, and love him. we know how strong he is. We know he can do this. Um, what I thought was the more interesting element was um, Feathers Pitcock mm. afterwards said, when he attacked, I thought, come on, it's. 82k to go like didn't take it seriously yeah and he later then described when the bunch realized that bugger this is this is actually (laughs) this is embarrassing hitting us with this it was like a bunch of dead bodies like they were trying yeah but nothing he got so Mm. far away that the rest of his team lost contact radio contact with his team car because the team car was with him he was out of range the team was out of range that's how far away he got Literally. That's crazy. First yeah. race of the year too. Yeah. Wow. So okay. incredible performance from him. Um, Over in the women's side, mm-hmm. uh, an almost repeat from last year where, you know, Lotta Kopecky was named the winner and then they took it away from her. Uh, but she did win. She got it this time. And she yeah. got it this time <laughs> in her rainbow jersey. Yeah. It was pretty amazing. Um, congratulations to her. And today is International Women's Day. So a big tick for Lotta the queen of the peloton. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Today, we love you. But <laughs> the finishing photo, so you have the big TV camera um, up on the, what's it called, Luke? Where's, um, Merksy, where does it go up on the... <laughs> who's, who's, yeah, sorry, what? <laughs> sorry, Merksy, where does it, what's the thing uh, that the camera scaffold. sits on? Right, on Catherine. the scaffolding. Oh, the fourth wall comes Thank tumbling you. down. Yeah. Up on the scaffolding, so it's elevated. Yeah. So you don't have, you know, like little dicky knee hats popping up or something. <laughs> but... Someone yeah. close to the scaffolding has climbed up and wanted to take a picture no. snip, of the finish. And so the finishing shot that went to broadcast yeah. of Kapeki crossing the line with her arms in the air is actually the top of her helmet and her arms mm. poking out here of the mobile here it is. phone screen. Here it is. Uh, so you can see ridiculous. it looks ridiculous. Wow. Imagine that, the camera <laughs> operator fuming, the director <sighs> fuming. I mean, again, it made a good meme. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look, it's immortalised. It was pretty funny and people were like then putting little cartoons of her over the camera. Like, "Eh, here she is. Yeah. Uh, So that was a little bit funny, but just incredible ride from her. Demi Vollering got third. Elisa longo Bulgini in the national champions jersey for Italy was wedged in the middle there. Uh, But it was a sprint for third and Cassia Nuadoma from Canyon Racing. She was absolutely devastated to just miss out. And it was just one of those moments in... World cycling, where you see how much it means to them. Like Absolutely. for us, we're watching and going, "Oh, ah, oh, good on them." Yeah. But her heartbreak, just sitting, head cradled in hands, bawling her eyes out, it just shows you what it means to these athletes. Yeah. And we see the celebration so often, but the disappointment that was. Oh, absolutely. Very, and very light and shade in one go. The the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of hours that they that they put in, absolutely smashing themselves mm. all year round, and it can come down to. That it can yes. come down to just a beat, an absolute beat, and that. that's I mean, all in all, the women's racing was more entertaining than that's the great men's was because of that. But um, I'm going to point out this beautiful frame. Yeah, please that we do. do have yeah, in I here. don't want to touch it, so you can grab um, it. No, it, it's an eight and a half thousand dollar frame. Yeah, I know. And I'm it's the exact one that Pogaccio was riding, yeah. Yeah. and that's why you're, po- I you're pointing the at the wrong one. But anyway, it's over oh, here. It's, it's over, over, it's over, over on Joel's side. There, there we go. There you go. We've had it express posted. He was literally riding it. Uh, is that right? Yes, no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Thank you, Tart, uh, and yeah. No, and they're going to build it up for us um, so we can take it out to the Brisbane Cycling Festival so that people can um, pick it up and have a feel of it because it's really quite a remarkable bike. But I, my question was why is it so fancy? And I now understand mm-hmm. the traditional Colnago, the C-Series, which is on my side. It's the rose gold one. Yep. Uh, it's beautiful. It's handmade in Italy. It is really made for comfort and it's so light. It's just such a beautiful all-around frame. Yep. But what they've done with the V-Series is make it very much for speed. It is 100% designed for the men and women on the world tour. So Team UAE ride it and Team ADQ uh, the women's team from the UAE also ride the same bike, yep. um, albeit different colour. And, and with, nice. of course, with wheels and, and wheels a seat. And, and all, all that jazz. And, and, you know, most of the time, when they don't, though, it's even more impressive. Yeah, and, and so they're quite different rides. Like the C-Series is quite a comfortable ride. The V-Series, it's just a tool to win a race. 
and so it's a little bit more responsive and a little bit um, less comfy and yeah. but they're beautiful. I mean, I've seen a lot of bikes in my life, but I picked up that frame and was. It was mind ex- blown. Yeah. I, I was They're beautiful. T- <laughs> I remember yeah. recently bringing an old bike of mine in and going, "Kate, check out how light this bike is." And you went like, "This is ridiculous." It's, I, mean, I refuse to pick it up. Everybody talks about bike tech, and it is quite interesting. But when you see bikes like this, yeah. it is a step above a lot of the frames that the other teams are riding. And yeah. so, while Pogacar, you know, has the physiological advantage, when he also has a bike like that. Oh, 100, kind of yeah, a put him whammy. on that. It's, well, we uh, have... Uh, mm. the it's like giving Babe Ruth a cricket bat. <laughs> Sorry, Merck. No, no, well, we have Podgy's bike built up for me in time for the Brisbane cycling We session. will. Oh, yeah, yeah. We will, yeah. 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 So we, we are yeah, going to, for our yeah. Brisbane friends, we're going to have it built up and in the festival um, yes. so that people can just come and try out what we're talking about because it's yep. really quite remarkable. And we're going to... Kind of avoid it. Am I going to be riding it, though? Oh, uh, oh, yeah. Um <laughs> I love how usually it's moving on, but now it's circling yeah. back. It's, it is, it is. We'll make sure, <laughs> we've got to make sure we give it a good polish though. Oh, you know what? When, but when, we can get Merck's your kit too. Like you could be Pogacha. Hang on, give what a good polish. <laughs> okay, we're not going to put a saddle in it so you can get as close oh. to Remco's concerns oh as is possible. I don't know what, good. anyway. Heavens. Probably move on. That is a move on moment. Oh, they're playing with our balls. <laughs> it is a fantastic frame, a fantastic pair of frames. Thank you to the team at Bike Bug for letting us display but not touch them. Uh, they're, it, it, they're basically like, a, it's like a museum here at the moment. It they're, really they're, is. They're exhibits. Is. Yeah, display but don't touch. <laughs> they're outstanding. And don't forget, uh, $850 off eight and a half grand yeah. is not to be... Um, Sneezed at? Sneezed at, yeah. It's take, not to be commented take it about. Off. That's not playing with anyone's balls. That's a oh. great. And thank you to um, Alberto, the security guard, who's out in yes. front of the studio yes. for the yes. last couple of days. Yes. Yeah. Good yes. job. Merxie was afraid to come home last night. Yeah, Kate, wanna... yeah. Kate so, and I are both wearing ankle yeah. bracelets. I slept on the couch the so that uh, Podgy's <laughs> frame could get a little spoon. And yeah, I was in the bed. Yep. And I, just, I was just polishing it yeah. all night. I love it. Yeah, I slept on the couch and uh, Merck's is like, yeah, I slept on the floor. The, we had to give the frame the bed. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Excellent. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so, so the shiny. Brisbane Cycling Festival is, uh, is there is so much happening. <laughs> but one of the one of the exciting parts, and we've, we've talked about it, we'll talk about it again, is, of course, the eSports uh, Nats happening. We've had yes. qualification happening. It's been exciting. We have a couple of announcements around this, Catherine. We do. Uh, da, 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 da. Do you want to lead out here? What do you want to go with first? Yeah, well, oof. look, the, this is cool. I mentioned earlier it's the first time in an Aussie champs capacity we've had an in real life final series like this. Yeah. So you qualify from home. So anyone can enter. Yep. Jump on in, get verified. You can enter. And then the finalists come um, to QUT, Queensland University of Technology in Brisbane. Uh, to ride the final. There'll be semi-finals and then finals. It's in this beautiful space called the Cube, which is like floor to ceiling uh, LCD screens. It's just... It's incredible. Oh, it is, it's yeah. a draw worthy space. Um, but, Mr. Spreadborough, yes. it will be you and I hosting the broadcast. Yes, so look da, out. Da, da, da. Uh, the wheelhouse is turning its head to yes. commentary uh, for the esports. Really looking forward to yes. it. Uh, Kate, obviously, bringing the expertise uh look i normally when i do esports i've got someone like dave toll uh by my side and he comes out with the it's on like donkey kong i don't know what accent that was i'm so sorry dave i'm so sorry yeah uh boston irish (laughs) something like that so i'm expecting you to go away and research some of those okay nintendo phrases i'll start with mario here we go And Excellent. We'll go from You're there. on track. Yeah, thank okay. you. It's a me, a Mario. Uh, Mercy, um, can you stay warmed up in case we have to sub in? Yeah, yeah. no, we're yeah. good. You Excellent. better be there, Mercy. We'll have Phil Liggett on standby. Oh, my God. <laughs> so it's on, the 20, it's on the 22nd of March. And if you can't be there in person, you've got to tune in uh, because I'm expecting a bit of a rating on your work and your phrases. Phraseology, is that a word? Yes, it is now. Uh, absolutely. Do it's going to be great. In? They don't tune in these days. Don't they? No, well, well, what it's do they a do? TV, you just tune, you the just pull the knobs. Go no, on. you just click a link. Click, click a link. Well, click the knob. <laughs> flick the knob. Um, we're think... going to be there. It's, 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 uh, look, I'm really excited. It's going to be, it's a, it's a really cool event. And um, what I love about it as well, in all seriousness, is some of the stories. Some of the stories. And, 
as I mentioned earlier, being the first to do that, mm. being the first to do that. I want to just shine a quick light on Jessica Bemrose, uh, Gold Coast rider. Fell into the sport, basically, uh, during COVID and coming out of doing some triathlons and being a runner, essentially. And then uh, realised, you know what, I, this is all right. I go good. Now has the setup at home in the garage. Not just hers, but her husband and her kids. She has four kids and they all get into it together. They all so get in the good. garage. They train together. And she speaks a lot about the camaraderie that they build literally through just chatting to each other through the headphones and all that kind yeah. of thing. But to have that, that family buy-in as well... I just love it. I had it's genuine really goosies cool. hearing about it. Yeah, and I feel like I know Jess because yeah. I've commentated on her so extensively. No idea what she looks like. She's just getting started. I can started. tell you her height, her weight, her average yeah. powers. Yeah. I know what her avatar looks like. She described the it, avatar. It's a pretty cool looking avatar. Yeah, so it's a little bit different. But yeah. I think there's a big future for it. I mean, even look at how hot the summer was in <sighs> in Queensland yeah. like the kids aren't going going to ride their bikes in the middle of the day yeah but if you're in an air conditioned room with a trainer it makes that accessible again well so, i think the break, yeah, the hottest day over summer bottle. in brisbane was 37 degrees like, nice symmetry there cuz jess at 37 years young is just getting started and doing an extraordinary job and congratulations to her and the other qualifiers, of course, so far, Vicky Whitelaw, Brianna Samuel. I might, I might struggle with her surname, and I do apologise <laughs> for that, Brianna. Uh, Kate T Turden, Josh Harris, Trent Stevenson, Samuel Hill, Andrew Downey in there so far. So far. We've got another, another set of qualifications. There'll be eight riders, uh, male and female. They'll do a semi-final. And then it'll go through to the final. I love it. I love it. Well done. Looking forward to that. Make sure you tune in. The Wheelhouse mm. will be going to commentary. And any look, who knows what's going to happen. We're really looking if forward to it. If you've got any uh, big like boxing phrases for Joel to use, any... Ooh, let's get ready to virtually <laughs> rumble. Maxie, I think we've created a monster. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, here we go. And you know what I love? I love Gosh. I love crossovers. I love changes of codes. One of my favourites, uh, you know, in recent years, is some of the footy players that went over and played AFL and mm. then came back going, yeah, no, no, we're not very, very good at that. But I think we have one today that might just take the cake as far as going from one sport to another, and and that the previous sport being one where you say, you you know what, if you play that sport, you'd never go to cycling. Right. I beg to differ, Catherine. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I beg to differ to anyone who claims that. Yes. Well, we've got a bit of an interesting crossover here from Major League Baseball. Yeah. Yes. Um, so we've got uh, Carlos Gomez from the Milwaukee Brewers. Go the Brewers. Uh, had an exceptional career, but um, 12 years, no, five years after his retirement, He's decided to come out of retirement and jump on a bike and trying to qualify for the Paris Olympics now on the, the track, on he, the velodrome. He's not, not not just any baseball player. This guy was a full, legit all-star, an absolute yeah. star yeah. of the MLB. Like, put your cue in the rack, you've yeah. done, you're, you're good, you're good for life. He's a very big name and a big, big personality, hugely popular in the Dominican Republic. Oh, I love him. Bit so. of cash in the pocket too. Like, no real yeah. reason to go and put your body on the no, line again. I, but I'm curious as to why. But, you know, there's a lot of cross-training that happens in sport. And mm. I think more than that, if, you, if you're thinking, how do you get from baseball to cycling? One of the big things is just the toolkit that you have. Mm -hmm. Your ability to work well in a team, to train to a program, to improve, to focus on that. Yep. The resilience. It's sort of all those things that you almost can't train into um, and I'm going to put this in inverted commas, a normal person that an elite athlete naturally has okay. and has built over an entire career. And so the, the physicality, I mean, they're highly trained athletes. They're athletes. And they're so. I, I look, I don't see a lot of, like mechanically, obviously, mm. it's chalk and cheese. But the, the, the traits you refer to, obviously. But they're, 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 they're fit, elite. right? Yeah. If you're fit and you're elite, then... Yeah, okay. Yeah. Good luck to him. We love you, Carlos. Fantastic. I'll tell you what, a move like that, that takes balls. Um, so well done to him. That's a good place to end this week, I, you know I what? think. <laughs> going it's been from, a total balls up. <laughs> going from one ball sport to, according to Remco, another, another. ball sport. Uh, this is the Wheelhouse Podcast. We make ourselves laugh. I hope we make you laugh from time to time as well. Do like, share, subscribe. Tell everyone you know, because it's the... Uh, it's it's a, it's the best dance cycling podcast in town there. Yes. I said it. Catherine, salute. Au revoir. Au revoir. Merci. Adios. 
And uh, just remember that um, when the UCI is playing with your balls, it's not very friendly. Thanks, Merxy. No worries. I'm going to go and polish. <laughs> the frame.